Hello everybody, welcome to the National Education Cycle and this presentation is going to be about the minimums, principles and conditions of Global Volunteer Program. And meet your fassy, that's me, Dima. But to be more precise, Dima, if anyone has any questions why exactly I have triple A in the end of my name, just hit me up, approach me on uh, Messenger, we'll have a short conversation about it. Let's get it started. So here's the agenda for today. Um, first, I'm going to talk about the definition of the minimums, what they are, and later explain why we need them exactly. I'll show a couple of examples in part three um, of, of the GV minimums that we have in ISIC. After that, we're going to do the same thing with the GV principles. So I'll tell the definition, uh, explain the purpose of principles, and also show some examples. Um, and there is a distinct, like, you can distinguish uh, types of principles because there are principles uh, towards the ICX, towards uh, the OGX, and towards the EP. Uh, afterwards, once we finish with the principles, we're going to go to the policies and then conditions. And the uh, part number eight is called important, which means that it's just uh, reminders for you. Let's get off. GV minimums. Uh, the minimums are basic requirements uh, for both sides of ISIC exchange uh, that has like that have to uh, happen occur in order to guarantee that the experience is going to be actually what we call a global volunteer. So these are the things. Um, not only minimums, also principles and conditions and policies. These are the things that uh, should happen uh, in order to be able for us to say that this is the global volunteer, not just a trip for um, for like traveling in traveling purposes to another country. That's what makes it different. So why do we need to know the GV minimums and what they are? Um, this is as like as ISICers, we have to know what these things are in order to ensure that the opportunity um, we're selling to the EPs, to, so to the exchange participants, um, are the true global volunteer experience, simply saying. And which ones are they? GV minimums are as follows. The opportunity has to be related to one SDG, always. This is a rule. Um, the opportunity must include the development of skills in a foreign environment, obviously. The elements of inner and outer journey. Uh, this is what you're going to learn in also uh, some other slides. Uh, so I'll just leave off that. Um, EP must be supervised by the opportunity provider. Uh, so if the EP is going to work in an NGO, NGO is going to supervise the EP and like help him and guide him. Um, the GV always lasts between six and eight weeks. Opportunity provider or a third party should cover accommodation during the full duration of, of the experience. So whenever the EP is going to another country to um, volunteer to do some stuff, they always have to have the accommodation covered and that should be done by the opportunity provider. The amount of hours that the EP has to spend for, for his volunteering only should uh, vary, can vary, and it should vary between 25 and 40 hours per week. Now the GV principles. Beside the minimums also there are the principles, um, and these are the rules regarding the selling part of the opportunity. So there are principles, as I said before, um, towards the ICX, which is the IGV and IGT, and also OGX, OGV and OGT. I'm not going to go like through each and every one of them because you have the access to these slides and you can check it whenever you wish, uh, but I'll just uh, go very quickly, um, like just on the surface. Um, EP and ICX must sign a contract. Uh, all the contracts have to be reviewed by a lawyer, but uh, fortunately these uh, contracts are are like reviewed by the lawyer before uh, you have them on your hands, let's say, so it's done for you. Um, all EPs have must, uh, must have an EPM on EXPA, EPM is the EP manager and the person that has to help and guide uh, this person through the whole experience and make sure that it's good. Um, the, cost must, the costs must be written in the opportunity and also in the contract. 
health insurance is very important and uh, we always track the like standards we have a standards tracking tool uh, for each uh, exchange participant to make sure that each exchange standard is being fulfilled and obviously um, there are also rules towards the EP as well so when you are selling the opportunity to some person the person has to be uh, between 18 and 30 years old and the second thing uh, the EP must be able to communicate in the language of the opportunity. So in my understanding, it's like B2 level, B1, B2. Uh, EPs must follow the AEPP, which is, oh, here you have a note on the left side, check ECB educational material. This is the, uh, let's say, a piece of material where you can find more information about it. Next one, let's go off to the GV policies. And in GV policies, um, like the, the, these are the things that we have to provide as ISEC. Uh, as ISEC, we should provide the information and help the uh, exchange participant with the, all the complaints and violations identified during the, uh, during the experience, um, as well as to the opportunity providers, so our partners, the NGO or school or some firm that we have a uh, contract with. We also have to ensure the exchange is complying with national law and as well as the ISA policies and in case of a natural disaster, crisis or anything that can affect the state of the EP or the opportunity provider, we all we always have to look into the uh, status of all the stakeholders, all the entities and people involved and make a rational decision based on it. GV policies for the OGX, here you go. And then the ICX, I'm not going to go like too deep, too deep into those. GV conditions. Uh, the conditions are um, about how to make the experience sustainable and safe for our EPs. And it's important to be aware of them because um, we have to make sure that the partners uh, are following them because otherwise we're not sending the the EPs to the partners that are safe, to the places that are safe. Yeah, here you see the big table. Um, and as you see, they're divided by different areas. So the financial safety area, program minimums area, risk management, EP safety and financial safety, EP safety. I'll just scroll through them. And also there is like the part for OGV because before there was the part for OGV, right? Now IGV, sorry. EP safety, a lot about EP safety because that's very important. And also you can see um, several rules regarding the COVID situation. And now the important part. Just make sure that you and your partners are aware of minimums, principles and conditions and you all follow them because otherwise the experience may not be full, safe, sustainable um, or just fun for your EPs and uh, the client is not satisfied, which means that your product is not good yet. So work on it. Just promote the opportunities to your EPs if they're following these minimums. Again, as I said, this is important not only for them, but also for you to do. Make sure to constantly check all these requirements and all these bullet points with your IR partners to make sure that your IR partners are also aware of them and uh, to make sure that you choose the right partners, not the ones that do not follow these rules. And here are the sources. You can find more information on here. Thank you for your time. This was very pleasant nine minutes. These were... <laughs> And um, again, hit me up if you're interested why I have the triple A in my uh, name. Thank you for your time. Have a good day. Bye.